Welcome to the Digging Deep Pay TV MX Podcast with your host, hailing from Kakana, Wisconsin, riding a CST Tires SSI decals traveling back Yamaha YFC 450R, four-time ATV Motocross National Champion, number 25. Cody Jensen. What's up, everybody? We're back. Welcome to the latest edition of the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast, episode 130. Shout out Kinsey Osborne and crew of the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast, presented by our title sponsor, CST Tires, in stock and available for purchase today at shop.csttires.com. I'm your host, Cody Jansen, saying hello to our nearly 248,000 monthly Digging Deep listeners in all 107 countries in which you are listening. And in this episode, the excitement will start to build for the 2024 ATV Motocross National Championship season that awaits us. Signups for a new season of Digging Deep ATV Fantasy are now open at ATVFantasy.com. And to celebrate, we'll start by chatting with defending ATV Fantasy champion Adam Smith. Then later in the episode, John Ford, Ford Brothers Racing frontman and father of both Bryce and Cody Ford, joins us to tell us what it's like to have not one but two boys racing as AMA ATV pros, reflect on an incredible 2023 season, look ahead to 2024, plenty of broad ATV racing topics, and of course, a little Briarcliff Legends race talk as well. But before we go any further, let's quickly shout out all of our incredible partners. CST Tires, go to shop.csttires.com today. Yamaha, thanks to Blue Crew. Thanks to SSI Decals, Valvoline, DID Racing Chain, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV Components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, the financial advice of the Haymauer Financial Group, DP Brakes, Factory 43, Binky's Forever ATC Museum, Impact Solutions, Ultimate Poly Products, UPP Racing, our choice when it comes to case savers, chain sliders, intake manifolds, and more, and Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. Start the season off right by going to manscaped.com and using code DIGGINGDEEP20 for 20% off plus free shipping. Whether it's the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra, the Goat of Electric Razor Trimmers, my favorite, the Beard Hedger Pro Kit from Manscaped, or the best nose hair trimmer ever created, the Weed Whacker 2.0, get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. So rad that Manscaped is continuing to invest in ATV racing as a longtime partner of Digging Deep. Help us keep them in the fold and involved in ATV racing by using our Digging Deep 20 code so they know you enjoy Digging Deep and what we're all about. Support all these great companies that support us, and for any products that fall through the cracks, click that Rocky Mountain ATVMC banner on our website. Preparations for the 2024 season should be in full swing by now for sure, and no matter what off-road gear parts you need, Rocky Mountain ATVMC has you covered. But before you buy, simply click that Rocky Mountain ATVMC banner on our website. But using our specific link, we get a percentage of what you buy on the back end, enabling you to help us out while purchasing the parts you need anyway. And did you know you can buy OEM parts from Rocky Mountain ATVMC as well? Yep, shipped conveniently right to your door. So click that Rocky Mountain ATVMC banner at Digging Deep ATV mx.com to help us out while satisfying all your gear and parts needs shout out to all of our donors and if you are interested in donating and hearing your name on the show you can find the patreon or buy me a coffee donation links on our website major thanks to all who have donated now if you can't donate but you still want to help us out you can leave us a rating or review on itunes and spotify that helps us out too now kick back, and as you listen, head over to ATVFantasy.com to start assembling your four-rider fantasy squad for the season opener at Daytona. Win, and you'll earn yourself a new pair of riding gear courtesy of Rocky Mountain ATV MC. Now, it's showtime. The 30-second board is up, it's sideways, and the gate is down. Time to dig deep. Let's go! All right, guys, we are back for another episode of the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast, and it's an exciting time. Uh, long, quiet off season has nearly come to an end. We're just one month away from the Daytona ATV Supercross to kick off a new ATV Motocross National Championship season, and that means season four of Digging Deep ATV Fantasy is here. 
Signups are now open at ATVFantasy.com and here to help add to the excitement for digging deep ATV Fantasy 2024 is our reigning, defending, and undisputed champion, Mr. Adam Smith. Adam, thanks so much for jumping on the show with me here, pal. We've been uh, we've been trying to make this happen for four or five months now, and like I was just telling you before we hit record, I feel like there's no better time than now to talk about it now that signups are open. So thanks so much for joining me, pal. Happy to have you here. Oh, yes, sir, Cody. I'm Glad to be here. Glad to talk some fantasy with you. And uh, I know it took a while to get here, but like you said, no better time than talking about it right before the season kicks back off. Absolutely, man. Adam comes to us courtesy of Factory 43. Upgrade to Factory 43's full line of Nerf bars, bumpers, and grab bars today by visiting factory43atv.com. So, Adam, congrats on the title. It takes a really lot to win one of these things. Hundreds of entries, yet you're the guy all alone standing at the top of the mountain at the end. I think you've been playing as long as we've been doing the fantasy game, I'm pretty sure. So what made last season different than the, the previous seasons, pal? Man, best way to sum it up is anything fantasy related. Luck, I mean, <laughs> luck play, luck plays the biggest part. So, uh, you know, all these riders, man, they're super talented, and you you kind of can gauge what they'll do. But man, Mother Nature and those tracks, the way they break down and stuff, you never can tell really until the season gets going really good. Then you get a little better feel for it, but. Man, look, man, biggest thing. <laughs> There's definitely some luck involved for sure. I think the fun part is trying to like think ahead, like what's going to happen. I don't like my big mm-hmm. thing always is I look back on the previous season at that track for whatever reason. I don't know if it works or it doesn't, but that's always like, you know, if, if Brandon Hogue was fast at such and such a track, like I'm bringing that over to the next season. That's always how I think when it comes to ATV fantasy purposes, but I'm curious to ask you this, like, are you of the same thinking as me that, uh, and I've been saying, I've been pounding the drum about this for a couple seasons now, but I think ATV fantasy enhances the fan experience so much because, you know, the more rooting interest, the more that you're invested, I think that like the guys that have won this thing are very in tune with what's going on, very up to date on the storylines and what riders are dealing with and all these things like to be successful at this, this thing, you have to be very in tune with what's going on. I truly believe that it takes the fan experience to a whole nother level, especially if you have buddies that are playing and you're able to talk about fantasy uh, i know that a lot of people enjoy that too but from my from my perspective and i know i'm biased but i really think that atv fantasy has added to the the fan experience especially for like i don't think that you're at all the nationals but still like to be able to be a part of it i just think man i think that fantasy atv fantasy has taken it to a whole nother level i really feel that way i've been around the sport since 2006 i ran the national circuit back in 2007 2008 you know i've been keeping up with these riders you know, 15, 16 years. I watch live time and scoring every single year, whether it be pro class, pro am, all the amateurs. Yeah. I feel like I, I feel like I know a lot of these people. We <clears throat> never even met them, but, you know, I like following these, you know, kids and stuff come up to the amateur ranks and see them progress and all that. And uh, it makes a difference. Like you said, it keeps, it keeps me very in tune because I still love the sport. You know, I'll never get away from it. Still go to the races, you know, here and yeah. there when I can. And, yeah, And it's just love for the sport more than anything. And like I said, your fantasy game really just, you know, brought it back to life even more with me. So, well, I think, you know, it takes you a little bit like away from being a spectator on the sidelines and like, now you actually have a rooting interest for somebody out there, you know, like I I've had so many people and I know that Logan had said it to me, Logan Stanfield had said it to me a few times over the last couple of seasons, but dudes in the middle of the class who, you know, I, I know that we're watching all the riders, but like dudes in the middle of the class are like, man, people are telling me like, you need to do it for my eight, my fantasy team this weekend and stuff like that. Like, I just, I think that, that that's pretty darn cool. Like, you know, to know that I think for some of those middle of the pack riders, I, I always think about myself in the pro class and think, man, if somebody came up to me at the autograph signing or or in passing that morning or whatever, and said, man, I have you on my team today. Like that would make me feel good. So, um, so that's always kind of how I think about that. Like, I feel like we have that rooting interest now because of ATV fantasy, even more more than just the guys you're you, you always pull for um that that part excites me it really does oh yeah and i'm sure that they enjoy it too to understand because i i know they like people rooting for them and then you know digging a little bit more into their careers and mm-hmm. you know it makes them more well known and fan favorites to a sense because you know i know i've got to where i follow all these guys on instagram so i can keep up you know see how they're doing you know see if they've had any injuries or see how they've been riding and things like that so you know i've i've got a lot more interest in keeping up with them and i'm sure like i said from their standpoint too they really enjoy the fan interaction with it too 
and I get such a kick out of walking through the pits and having people say, Hey, you know, who's going to do it for my fantasy team this weekend? Who, who you got this weekend? Like, I just think that's the coolest thing. Like we've obviously seen it in other sports over the years and to kind of bring that to the ATV motocross side of things, like that's something I'm pretty proud of. So, um, like I was saying before, I think the more, you know, the more, the more invested you are, the, the more that you care. And I think that if you dumb that down, it's like, we care about ATV motocross that much more. And I think that ATV fantasy kind of does play a play a role in that for sure so um tell me about your season in in fantasy adam um i'm sure you were in the mix all season long being the the champion i'm sure you were kind of in the mix all season long i don't know that you got any event wins though and and i think that even previous champions went a season just maybe just like you not getting any uh fantasy wins event wins but still being the champion by being consistent so so yeah tell me about your season a little bit uh, it was good. Kind of like you said, just consistency, man, it plays the biggest role in this. And I didn't get any wins. Uh, I, I don't even know if I got a first or a second throughout the whole season, to be honest with you. I think I might have got one third. And other than okay. that, it was just top fives, you know, try to every every week, obviously. And, uh, you know, like you said with these guys, I think uh, tier one, obviously, it's always going to be that shootout between Joel and Chad. But, yeah. you know, Joel felt like he had that pretty good edge just last year. So, I think I picked him every single round. I think I may have picked Chad at Illinois, but I still think I went with Joe. So, okay. Uh, but one of the other guys I think that maybe stood out to me the most throughout the year was Wesley Wolf. Yeah. I felt like he was just solid and I feel like he got me a lot of my points that I needed. Some of those, you know, yeah. rounds that kind of boosted me up to the top a lot there of times. So. Yeah. I, I love that. I think that, yeah, like it's, it's hard, you know, you obviously have those staples and Joel's obviously a hard guy to pick against. He's got a huge pick trend every week. And some of the, the leaders in those other tiers and it's hard, like we had to adjust last year. We had to make it a five tier system at one point because some riders were just becoming kind of the staples in their groups and you want it to be hard. You know, you, you, you want it to be a hard selection each and every week for each and every tier. So uh, we've had to adjust on the fly a little bit, but yeah. So then, so then you were in the mix all season long, didn't get any wins as it's coming down the stretch. At what point did you realize like, Hey, I might be in the mix to win this thing. Honestly, I was kind of nervous because I was going back between app and then the website. Okay. And I know, you know, like there was that, that point discrepancy because yeah. I think you said something about the app filling up so much that you didn't have enough room. So yeah, something, something happened there just to, just to fill people in. We got like too full or whatever, where I was, we were never told that the platform had a cap. So I'm like, you know, there's people signing up and everything's good. And it just like, just so happened that like the night before Daytona, I, th- I think it was like the very night before the thing the thing people were trying to sign up and the thing was full and it was telling people that they couldn't sign up anymore. So then I'm telling the game, the people that made the the platform or whatever, I'm like, man, like we need to get this open. We need to pe- 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 to get people in and all these things. And they're like, the only thing we can do is make a, another league or whatever. And then we'll merge them. Well, that, that wasn't the easiest thing to do. And that was the hard part is if you were on one side or the other, unless we put the master list, like we tried to put on ATV fantasy from both of your perspectives, you could only see your side of the league. So there was like a league of like only 50 guys. And I think that might've been the side that you were on yeah. where, where, you know, so, but anyways, long story short, that's what happened there. So that was a, a blind siding and, and not an exciting thing for us. Um, but those are all rectified this year and there is no cap and we could have a million people enter and it wouldn't be an issue. But, uh, but anyways, um, coming down the stretch there when, when you said you got nervous. So tell me about, uh, th- those last, those last little bits there about, uh, wrapping this thing up. Loretta's, man. I don't know why, but Loretta's always scares me with fancy <laughs> stuff. So, you know, I know Joel's had his share of bad luck there. So has Chad at times. So, you know, I felt like that tier one pick for some reason scared me that last little go around. And all the other ones, I know Loretta's get super rough. It's hot. So, you know, I'm sitting there thinking about what riders do good and heat, you know, which ones excel later in the motos and yeah. rougher tracks. So, you know, I went back and looked through some of the races and I kind of looked at trends and lap times throughout some of the other rougher, the more rougher you were doing your homework you're like you're you're way deep into this thing you're a deserve a champion well i had to do what i had to do to finally get me one if i never win me another one i can say i got me at least one of them so <laughs> i love it i love it man well that's awesome i i thought the same thing the coming down the stretch that was going to be one of my questions for you I, I think you were leading going into the finale right i believe so by two or three points yes sir 
I thought so. Yeah. So I was going to ask you about the emotions down the stretch. You said you were nervous. I always think the same thing about Loretta's. It always seems like, the, you know, Loretta's is a wild card in itself. And then the weather that we had and the conditions, it was muddy and it was a mess and all these things like made it, made it that much more of a wild card. Um, and I should have asked you before Adam, but were you in the mix in previous seasons at all? And I ask you that because previous champion, Curtis Evelo, uh, he won in 2022 and in 2023, he finished 59th. So, so I was wondering if you've been in the, in the mix every season, or if this is like, a if this is, I don't know, some kind of graduation to right at the top for you in 2023. Uh, definitely graduation. Yeah. You know, kind of struggled in the past days. I think I've always floated around that. I don't know, 100 to top 50 mark, but okay. I don't think I've ever breached top 20, top 30, anything like that. So it was just a good season last year, you know, finally got through to one. So got it. Well, I, I, I love that. Like you said, some of it is luck, but some of it, I mean, like I said, you did your homework and I'm sure there's people out there that do their homework and they're still in, you know, 150th, but, uh, oh, but yeah, I think the, the more research you do, so, see, this is my thing. I think the more I think about it, sometimes I, I convince myself to go the wrong way. Like I need to just go with my gut and, but I will absolutely talk myself out of what I should have stuck with. Like I'm, I'm the guy that changes my team five times over probably before I submit that thing for the final time. Yeah. I'm the same way. I know there was one round. I don't remember who it was now, but I did change out. I think it was my tier three pick. I don't know why I just had a gut feeling about changing it. And I did. Then if I would have kept my original pick. I actually would have won that round. So that was one of those times that Damn. got me, unfortunately. And then, you know, it set me back. So Damn. like you said, Sometimes it's just better to go with you get so. Well, uh, no matter what happened, you still got the title. So that's all that matters. And the, the fun part always for me, like it's cool. And I've, I think about this when I would have been a racer too. I've, I've said that once already, but like if I would have been going pro and then there was a fantasy game at that time, like to be in the fantasy game for the first time, like some of those things are what excites me as a, uh, as a player of the game now or whatever is when you see some of the new riders in the game mm -hmm. for the first time. And we know we'll have some new riders for the 2024 season. Of course, obviously tier one will be what you, what, what we expect. Just like you said before, Joel Hattrick, Bryce Ford, Chad Weenan, uh previous winners, the top three in the points last season, the regulars really will be in tier two as well. Rastrelli, Janusa, Hogue, and Linquist. But then is after that is where it gets exciting. In tier three, uh, to start the season at least, we know these riders can fluctuate as the season goes on and as riders, um, you know, race in different groups and all those things. But Wesley Wolf, Kevin Saar, the return of Zach Decker, defending Pro-Am champion rookie Mason Jackson, and Italy's Patrick Torini, if and when he's in attendance, will make up Tier 3. And then in Tier 4, selections are led by Cody Ford, Aaron Salinas, Adam Ulrich, John Glotta, if and when he shows, Marshall Smith, Andrew Shaddle, Zach Harris, incoming rookie Joe Chambers, rookie Blair Miller, and rookie Tino Abatiello. So, so yeah, always love seeing the new riders on there, seeing where these riders are going to fit in these tiers. I love just thinking about the, the battles even in a tier, you know, like who's going to win that tier on any given weekend. You mentioned tier three already once, and, and so often that's such an exciting tier for me for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. The the Wesley Wolf, Kevin Saar, Zach Decker, Mason Jackson, Patrick Torini, if he's rumored to show up at some point, that's just such an exciting tier for for me and and I think about like who's going to win that tier that's just exciting so um Adam we know it's going to be some new riders to pick this year I guess what about an overarching strategy do you have a strategy that you typically go with are you a play it safe guy are you a, a swing for the fences guy I'm curious as to what how you think about that or or is there not much of a strategy are you just you know picking with your heart uh, a little bit of strategy I guess I would say uh I do base a lot of my decisions off past results and, you know, how they raced the year previous. And My man, I like that. And and this year, you know, with all these rookies coming in, it's like that tier three, like you said, between Zach Decker, Wesley, and even Mason Jackson, how he was riding last year, man, it's going to make it tough. And mm -hmm. first two rounds, I'm going to say there probably ain't going to be a whole lot of strategy with that one other than seeing how they perform, you know, mm -hmm. the full moto, both motos, and yeah. see how they end up with that overall. But, you know, safe picks, you know, Try to do say picks tiers one, two, and three. Then after that, it obviously gets a little bit harder. So yeah. So have you done any thinking about like I don't want you to give away your secrets or anything, but have you done any thinking about who you're going to pick at the opener? Which tier or just overall? 
well, just in general, right? Like we can look at the tiers. I mean, obviously Chad before the last couple of years, Chad has been a guy that was really dominant at Daytona. Um, the last couple of years we've seen Hattrick really, Joel's really flexed his muscles could see Bryce kind of grab another gear. Obviously he's been a podium guy at this point. He's been a race winner at this point. Like now he's going to think that the next step for him is being in the mix for a championship down the stretch. I would think like that would be the next graduation here. He's finished second in points at this point. So, um, so what about, let's kind of go down the list here. Tier one. What are you thinking for Daytona? Like, I know maybe you haven't done a ton of thinking about this yet, but obviously as people listen to this, their mind is going to be turning gears are going to be turning in their head. So what are you thinking for Daytona tier one? Uh, whole shot. So catch your tier one. Got to go with it. Um, whole shot. So important. And, you know, I feel like he's got his starts dialed, you know, more times than not. So if I had to just pick one, it'd be Hedrick for tier one. So hard to pick against the guy anyway, right? But yeah, uh, absolutely. Spe- yeah, yeah. especially after the season he had last year, he was so dominant. So then oftentimes, like, you know, very likely or a lot of times, right? Hedrick, Ford, Weenan. That could be some combination of that is the podium. Um, but that's not always the case. You know, the, these guys that we see in tier two, tier two a lot of times is that podium spot like that's just the way that it works out so uh tier two whether it's for third or fourth or some other spot that tier two pick is going to come down to Restrelli, Janusa, Hogue, and Linquist. so what's your what's your gut thinking there something tells me Hogue. I feel like he's just got a chip on his shoulder from that race a couple years ago and he's one too if he gets a whole shot I think he can lead it wire to wire so I'll go on with Hogue on that one he's such a such a sexy pick i always feel like in that tier two like his upside is is so high all those riders are good they've all finished on the podium but hard to pick against uh against brandon hoax i'm with you there i would have the same team up till now though i will say that nick janusa has been has been historically very good at daytona as well so he's a he's a guy that if i'm if i'm sticking to like my normally changing it as the race gets closer i might be switching to janusa but uh but yeah brandon hogue would would probably be my pick as we sit here today as well um okay tier three you already said wesley wolf is your guy a lot of times in tier three but wesley wolf kevin Sar, zach decker mason jackson and Patrick Torini. I don't know if Torini is going to be there for Daytona or not, but those would be your five riders to choose from. Wolf, Sar, Decker, Jackson, Torini. Who you got? I'm going to go with the dark horse. I'm going to go with Mason Jackson. I'm going to say he pulls a good top five start, and I'm going to say he rounds it off, and I'm going to say he gets tier three this year. Damn. It's hard to pick against Decker, too, in my opinion, on this one. I feel like he's itching to get back out there and get him a good one, but I'm going to go Mason Jackson on this one. Yeah, I, I, I love the pick. I can't wait to see where he fits into the pro class. I think it's going to be really, really exciting because if you look at how good he was last year, give up, you know, another half a year of growth or whatever. I'm sure he's doing a lot of training this off season and all those things. Very excited to see where Zach Decker is going to fit into the class. Um, I think he's going to be a guy that could push for top fives, maybe not right away, but there's going to be a guy in this tier that's going to push for the top five and probably finish in the top five at Daytona. If history has told us anything, Um, I think I would go with Zach Decker. Just like you said, I think that with a good start and we know he's obviously got Buku laps underneath him at the Decker training facility, you know, he's going to come in with uh, tons of experience and and, uh, muscle memory built up and and a lot of riding under his belt. Um, I'm going to go Zach Decker, especially because, because we saw him pushing for for top three finishes like he finished third in that opening moto i believe at gatorback last year and then crashed in the second moto like we were seeing all time zach decker like the best we've ever seen him when he went out so if that's the benchmark for him uh, maybe he's not going to pick up right where he left off but like he's shown us what he's capable of i'm gonna have a hard time picking against zach decker in in tier three there so that might be a a lock of a pick but i love the mason jackson pick i'm, I'm very excited to see what's going to happen with him and then tier four uh, there's a lot here. Um, it's almost like Cody Ford, at least in my mind, should have been in his own tier, like have his own tier of tier four, because I don't know if he belongs with the other guys, but, uh, wasn't going to do that. So, so we got Cody Ford, Aaron Salinas, Adam Ulrich, John Glotta Jr., Marshall Smith, Andrew Shaddle, Zach Harris, Joe Chambers, Blair Miller, and Tino Abatiello. Don't know if every single one of them is going to be there. But would you do you have anybody that stands out? I know I got a mouthful there, but did anybody stand out to you there for for tier four to complete your team? 
Cody Ford, kind of like you said, I feel like he's kind of a standalone. I know a lot the rookies with you know Miller and them coming in that they had good races last year there, but Cody Ford experience, I think it gets him you know that top tier in the tier four range. I think so too. Um, hard to play it safe in ATV fantasy, like like that's just not how you think about the game. But I think Cody Ford is like the safe pick there. I really do. You know what you're going to get from him. He's so solid. He's the same every single weekend. He's going to do every lap. He's not going to quit. He's on good equipment, all those things. That's what make Cody Ford such a, such a good pick, but it also makes this tier four really interesting to me because you know, some of those rookies like Joe chambers was extremely fast a year ago in pro sport there. Mm -hmm. I don't know where his fitness will be. Um, but, he's going to be really fast and Blair Miller will be really fast. And, you know, Tino Abatiello, like we said, and, and Adam Ulrich was good a year ago. He was a top 10 finisher. Aaron Salinas probably leads maybe for lap for lap speed. Aaron Salinas might be the fastest of them all. Um, and then John Glada Jr. was was really solid GNCC guy, finishes top 10 in, in races last year. I think he might have been that pick at Daytona a year ago in that tier. So, um, yeah, very hard to pick against Cody Ford, but going to be a, a really exciting tier there. So um, we'll have to see how your team of Joel Hattrick, Brandon Hogue, Mason Jackson, and Cody Ford lines up there, stacks up there at Daytona, but it's a, it's a good sounding team as we sit here today. So uh, really exciting. I, I'm ready for these guys to go racing already, pal. I'm, I'm psyched about it, especially sitting here and chopping it up about it. And uh, like I said before, for anybody listening, we've made some improvements. There's going to be no split league hurdles like we had a year ago. The platform has been expanded, so that shouldn't be an issue. My only hope, my only hope, is that we don't wait until the the very bitter end to have everybody sign up solely because I'll be at Daytona. So maybe it's a little harder to navigate, but uh, I feel like we get 50% of our signups in like the last 12 or 24 mm -hmm. hours. we got hundreds of stuff pouring in at the very end, which is all good, but inevitably, you know, there's hiccups and I don't think we've had any problems so far. I think it's been picture perfect so far, but, but yeah, always, always maybe a little difficult doing that from Daytona might not be the easiest thing. So, uh, that's your, that's your call to sign up now at atvfantasy.com and, and you may be the next ATV fantasy champion chatting with me here on the digging deep ATV MX podcast. But, uh, Adam, I want to congratulate you on your title again. Remind me what you chose as a, as a prize for winning this thing, pal. I can't remember. Uh, Chad Wiener destination jersey and goggles. Oh man, that's a that's a that's a must have. That's a that's a beautiful piece of history right there. And I couldn't really go against it because, like I said, unique wise, I mean, that number in forty seven. You know, yeah, not you're not going to see very many jerseys with his name on it, and you know that number. And knowing they won, you know, our first nations with all that was awesome. Obviously, so yeah, any of the team USA, anything has become yeah, yeah. like really, really, it's iconic almost to me. Like it's got such a, like what it means is so special to me. And then to think that you got a, a Chad Wienan, uh number 47 Jersey from the quad cross of nations there, man. That's uh pretty cool. I, I had a, I had a, a thought when he said that that's what he was going to send in as his, his contribution to the prizes. I figured that was going to be the number one. So, um, so yeah, that's an awesome piece of history to have. I love it. Well, Adam, Thanks again so much for playing ATV Fantasy. Congrats again on the title. Thanks so much for joining me. And uh, and good luck in the upcoming season, pal. But just know, I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you in 2024. Uh, didn't get you last year. I don't even know that I was that close. But I'm coming for you this year, pal. I'm ready for it, and I'm looking forward to it. And uh, thank you again, Cody, for, you know, putting this game together for all of us and bringing the community, you know, together even tighter and helping us keep up with this sport in a fun way. And I really enjoy the game. Hey man, I'm, 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 I'm here doing this because of people like you, if it wasn't for people like you supporting it, if there was just a handful of people playing it, I'm sure we'd still have fun, but it wouldn't be nearly as much fun. So I really appreciate people like you playing and uh, man, it, it's just so exciting. It's so exciting for me. We give out so many prizes. Uh, we give out prizes for every event, right? We got great partners like Rocky mountain ATV MC and CSD tires. I mean, Rocky mountain gives out multiple sets of gear each season for us and, and tire sets and just all 
kinds of cool prizes. Like we were just talking about Chad Ween and Jersey. I mean, what, how could you get those anywhere else, you know, without at least, you know, paying Buku bucks for them. And uh, man, we make those available for, for our players. And all you got to do is be able to play the game. So, um, so yeah, again, pal, I can't thank you enough for playing best of luck in 2024. And uh, thanks so much for giving me a little time. Maybe you just never know, pal. Maybe you can back to back this thing. And we're sitting here a year from now and you're the back to back champ. That'd be pretty badass. It would be badass. I'm going I'm going to do my best to retain it and see if I can't win it back to back years. <laughs> uh, I love it, man. Well, thanks so much for joining me and uh, we'll talk soon. All right. That sounds good. Thanks Cody. That's Digging Deep ATV Fantasy Champion Adam Smith signing off on the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast brought to you by Factory43ATV.com. Thanks so much for joining me. And everybody listening right now, sign up is now open at ATVFantasy.com. See you, pal. Thanks again. We'll get right back to the show, but now a word from our sponsors. And thank you for listening to these ads. Without these great companies, none of this would be possible. Show your support for the people who support us. The official tire choice of Digging Deep, CST tires are the choice of ATV Racing's elite on the track, in the woods, and every other terrain. CST tires swept the ATV Racing world in 2022 as Joel Hattrick, Bryson Neal, and Bo Barron rode their Pulse MXR and Pulse HT tires to an ATV Pro Motocross title, GNCC XC1 Pro title, and 10th ATV Pro Works Racing title, respectfully. Led by champion Joel Hattrick and podium contenders Bryce Ford, Jeffrey Rastrelli, and Nick Janusa, CST's Pulse MXR tire is the most trusted tire in ATV motocross today. Available in soft and standard compounds, the Pulse MXR offers the highest level of traction, most predictable cornering, and superior wear characteristics when compared to the competition. And did I mention they have a contingency program as well? Visit shop.csttires.com to join the CST takeover today, or prepare to be beat by someone who did. The best of the best choose CST. Do you? You know we're Team Blue Crew here at the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast, as the Yamaha YFZ450R is the official ATV of Digging Deep. In a move started by eight-time ATV MX Pro Class National Champion Chad Wienan, who with his next championship will become the winningest champion in ATV motocross history, we are living in ATV Racing's YFZ450R era. Alongside Wienan, seven-time GNCC XC1 Pro ATV National Champion Walker Fowler welcomed a pair of new champions to the Yamaha Champions Club as the podium-proven Yamaha YFC450R proved to be the winning choice for Joel Hetrick and Bryson Neal. This unprecedented success for the YFC450R, its unrivaled quality and performance, and the clear fact that Yamaha is the leading OEM supporter of ATV racing has resulted in a complete Yamaha takeover within the sport quad market. Evident by the continuation of Yamaha's Blue Crew Racer Support Program, Yamaha riders will once again cash in on payout and prize opportunities in 2023, including a chance to win a brand new YFZ450R. For more info, head over to YamahaBlueCrew.com. Follow Yamaha Outdoors as well as the new Blue Crew official channel on social media and check out Yamaha's full proven off-road lineup at YamahaOutdoors.com today. SSI decals, your decals, your way. SSI decals sets the standard with the best looking decals, graphics kits, and vinyl wraps in the industry. Established in 1947, SSI took shape as an offshoot of their parent company by doing a little work for local pro Chad Wienan. Nearly two decades later and fueled by a passion for ATVs, the company has flourished into one of ATV Moto's most recognized brands. From ATV Motocross, SSI has expanded into graphics and design work for top racers in GNCC, works racing, pro motocross and supercross, off-road, and more, headlined by eight-time world champion top fuel drag racer Clay Milliken. Whether your project is big or small, SSI decals will make your identity stick. Get started today at SSIDecals.com and use code DIGGINGDEEP10 for 10% off at checkout. Things are about to get sick. The Digging Deep ATVMX podcast is brought to you in part by DID and their wide range of championship winning chains. From the street to the track and everywhere in between, DID chains are designed to give you the optimal riding experience with great performance and increased chain life. Consistent to the core, pick up your box of reliability today. DID, what drives you? We are proud to be partnered with Namira Technologies. For over 20 years, Namira has pushed the limit of value and reliability in the ATV and side-by-side -side market. Covering more applications than anyone in the industry, Namira's full line of cast and forged pistons, connecting rods, gasket kits, and industry-leading top-end repair kits and more have led to higher overall engine performance for your machine. Visit your local dealer or online at www.namura.com. 
and follow along on Instagram for giveaways and exciting new products in 2023. Namira Technologies, your one-stop shop engine component supplier. We are pleased to be partnered with Bronco ATV and UTV Components. Bronco has been an industry leader in replacement hard parts and accessories for all makes and models for over 15 years. With a catalog that includes a full line of electrical components, engine internals and cylinders, shock and suspension parts, winches, clutch kits, valves, carb kits, bearing kits, and drive chain parts, Bronco is your hard parts source for whatever you need for whatever you ride. Available exclusively through distributors around the world, visit your local dealer or online at broncoatv.com. For over 150 years, Valvoline has been dedicated to constant improvement and innovation across all disciplines of racing. As a proud member of Team Valvoline for nearly a decade, I have witnessed their unwavering commitment to pushing the boundaries of performance. Valvoline has sponsored some of the greatest names in motorsports, solidifying their position as a powerhouse within the industry. Being a part of this historically great team has been an incredible privilege. When it comes to my equipment, whether it's my daily commuting vehicles, race quads, or anything in between, I trust nothing but Valvoline. Their range of products and lubricants consistently deliver increased horsepower, durability, and engine life. I'm excited to announce Valvoline's breakthrough in performance, Valvoline Ultimate Power Sports. With up to eight times stronger rust protection and 50% better wear protection, this cutting edge formula ensures your ATV's engine runs smoother and longer for the ultimate ride. Tackle rugged terrains with confidence knowing your ATV's engine is equipped with the best protection available. Ready to experience the next level of performance? Head over to shop.valvolineglobal.com and use code DIGGINGDEEP10 at checkout to unlock an exclusive 10% off on your purchase. Don't miss out on this limited time offer to enhance your ATV's performance with Valvoline's ultimate power sports engine oil. All right, guys, back here on the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast. And I have to say, I've been wanting to have this next guest on for some time now. Brought to you by our friends at Binky's Forever ATC Museum. Start planning your trip to Binky's today at binkiesforeveratc.com. And joining me is a man that has a very rare perspective of the AMA ATV Pro Class, parent of not one but two Pro Class racers, Mr. John Ford. John, welcome to Digging Deep, buddy. Thanks so much for making a little time for me. Thank you for having me. John, I've uh, I've been wanting to do this for some time. I meant what I said about wanting to chat with either you or Robin about what it's like to have two boys on the track at the same time during AMA ATV Pro Class action. And then you claimed our basket at the 88 Live to Ride auction at Loretta's there, and that earned yourself a spot on the show here. So uh, this couldn't have worked out any better for me, pal. <laughs> right. So, so tell me what it's like to have two boys, both Bryce and Cody out there at the same time. I'm sure maybe like at this point you're used to it, but is it hard to keep tabs on them? Is it extra emotional or is it uh, what you're used to at this point? It's super hard. It's um, it, it never gets easier as the years go. And I'll tell you one of the hardest things was um, actually pleasure Valley where you had Bryce who won and Cody barely missed the podium he got fourth and you're like devastated for one and so happy for the other and and for it to happen to Cody on the last lap, it was really hard. Oh, I know. So I didn't know we were going to go right to that topic, John, but, but I thought about that in the moment. Um, I'm tracking this as it's happening. I'm like, Cody's like with one lap to go, Cody had the podium. Right. And, yep. and I, I just remember that exact feeling like not knowing what it must be like for you guys, like feeling that roller coaster of emotion is what I assumed it was. Like you just said, the jubilation that Bryce now just won his second career overall, but yet you came a half a lap away from having two boys on the podium. I mean, awesome, awesome for Cody, like what he did that weekend, but mm -hmm. I, I can't imagine what that felt like. And, and Cody seemed like a trooper right up there for Bryce and then stoked for him and all those things. But man, what could have been? Absolutely. And, and I always look at the positive on it all. And I look at both of them being top five. That's huge. Yeah, so big. We talked about this, John, I think. Brothers that race the pro class, but like to be at the pinnacle of it like that, that finished on the podium in a moto, like I don't know that that ever happened because we saw that in the first moto with the boys in first and third. So I, I, it's either way, that seemed like a first for, for our sport, at least in, in my book. Yeah, I agree. And I look back at um, like, who are the brothers that have raced in pro class? And I, I feel that Cody and Bryce are probably the best ones out of the group that I know of, mm -hmm. you know, thinking of the Millers and the snaps and Nicholson brothers, 
And I feel that Cody and, and Bryce are probably the best other groups that I know of. No, I think, I think you're totally right. Like we've seen brothers here and there. It's obviously a rarity, but yeah, you have, you have two brothers there that have finished on the podium, not at the same time, but they've both been podium racers. And like I said, on that same weekend, it might've not been an overall podium, but it was a, it was a moto podium that they shared together. Like that's pretty special. I mean, I, I, as a family, I, I just, again, I can't imagine what that must be like and all the pride that comes with that and all those things. So I didn't know we were going to get into that topic right away. We, right. Might, we might touch on it a little bit as we go here. Uh, we'll bring it full circle, but um, we know that the season is fast approaching, John. We're only less than a month out from Daytona at this point. So what can you tell me about the boys prep for 2024 and how that's going? Um, Bryce's is going really good. Cody actually started uh, his own business and he's doing excavation and he's doing really really great with it he's super busy good so he's been sneaking uh sometimes some days he'll come uh well not some days but like on a wednesday he'll get out of there about noon try to come ride and then he'll set the weekends aside to ride the only thing tough right now is the weather for him like it seems like when he has time to ride uh the weekends we seem to get more rain than during the week it's crappy. Got it. Well, that's awesome to hear because the last I talked to Cody, he was in the early stages of starting this business and, and asking about finding traction with it and all these things. So that's pretty cool. And that's one thing that I think is so special about what, you know, both of your boys are doing. Cause, so I don't know what Bryce will do with his life after professional ATV motocross racing, but it'll probably be somewhere in this realm or this realm will lead him to where he's going to want to go. I know he's, he's very much into the two wheeled thing and he can build stuff and track parts down and i mean you can i'm sure he could take it a million different avenues but with cody he did so much of the track maintenance there and and all that stuff and i know he ran that facility there for you guys and gave bryce a beautiful track to practice on and all that stuff and now that's kind of unfolded into what he's doing with right with excavation and the things that he's doing big equipment and stuff like that and i just think that like with our sport because nobody nobody retires on any money that you do make in our sport. Right. But the part that I don't think everybody sees, I think the important part is that so many of us take what we do and learn in this sport and, and all of the talents that you hone in our sport. And then you take that and either pave a way for yourself or find out what you're good at and take those talents into what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And I think that your boys are a, a perfect representation of that. Yeah, and, and I was really nervous there for a bit because Bryce was working a lot with Cody, and I honestly felt he was kind of getting a late start on it. But at their level, they know what they need to do, and now Bryce has been riding a, a lot, and you're like, wow, he looks really good. And um, Cody's actually looking actually really good too. Both of them are. That's awesome to hear. I, you know, I, I think that some of this has come full circle too because, you know, we've we've touched on some of these shows that – you know, it was just what, two years ago. And Bryce seemed like he was ready to be done with this. And, mm -hmm. you know, he was over it. And I was hearing things coming up to the opener. Like, are we sure Bryce is racing from people that were very much in the know with what's going on. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden he goes out there and he has a good race and gets washed right back into this thing and, yeah. and everything unfolded in a, in a great way. And then he goes to quad cross nations and all these things, like everything fell into place. And, and it's funny how that, that, like, that's how life works sometimes. And now it seems like Bryce is so all in and, and he eats, sleeps and breathes it just as much or more than anybody. And, and all these things, but it's funny how, how stuff like that unfolds. So awesome to hear that the boys are looking good and, and things are good, you know, off the track and good yeah. uh, on the track as well as the season gets closer. It's going to be hard to beat 2023, John, because it was, uh, it was pretty special. The bar was set, has been set pretty high at this point with Bryce winning a moto, winning an overall. He does it again later in the season. We were just talking about that. Cody podiums a moto. We just talked about that. He nearly podiumed that overall there, not to mention the quad cross of nations. Man, hard to imagine it getting much better than 2023, but, but that's always the goal, right? Like that's why we keep coming back is trying to recreate those, those happy emotions, those endorphins, whatever we experience, we're, we're always coming back for more, right? So that'll be the goal to set the bar just a little bit higher, but damn, that bar is set, set pretty high at this point, John. No, it is. And I honestly believe that what you see like with Bryce, he feels very comfortable riding that pace and that speed now with those guys and then going overseas twice with them and riding more with them. Yeah. 
And I think that made a huge difference. It's, and you've seen it in the past. Whoever gets comfortable, it, it's super important. They know that they should be up there. And when they have that mindset, they're just totally different. Mm -hmm. I think that right. He, Bryce knows he belongs and that's what you're touching yeah. on right now. He knows he belongs with those guys. He spent enough time with them. He spent enough time on track around them in between them, mixing it up with them. And in oftentimes, and maybe you can give me a glimpse into this because you've watched this little boy grow. But I think about Bryce and I think about, you know, it wasn't that long ago that he was riding number 44 on his, you know, 250 and looking mm -hmm. up to riders like Chad Weenan. And then he becomes like a, you know, a competitor of these guys. And then he becomes uh, a guy who's, you know, studying what these guys are doing while racing them. And then he becomes a guy that we see at the quad cross of nations past Chad Weenan and win a moto at the quad cross of nations, like what that must be like, like, and I think that that shows that these riders in our sport and other sports, these top level riders are cut differently than we are. Like they don't think the way that we do because I was a pro class racer and until the day I retired, looked up to Chad Weenan, like, holy shit, that's Chad Weenan. And Bryce may still think of Chad that way yet at the same time, he's like, but I think I can beat you. I know I can, I can possibly get the best of you on this day. And I think that that's like, that's a, a good representation, a good example of what makes these guys at the top level, probably of any sport, but the top level of our sport different than everybody else is they just have this, they have this infusion of confidence in them that like makes them different. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And I think one of the neat things, and, and you hear the, the you know, people talk, but you know, when Bryce beat Chad earlier in the year, they're like, Chad's hurt, Chad's hurt. And then Chad had already won Loretta's beat Joel and Bryce. And then we go overseas and it's games on Bryce starts second row and tracks him down and passes them. And I know watching the replay of the video of the race being broadcast, you see Chad kind of glance back and Bryce just drove on by him and Chad really didn't fight him hard. And I look at that, just how much Bryce had matured from the start of the year to the end, Chad's riding probably at hundred percent at that particular time. And Bryce's too. And to be able to beat Chad was a huge accomplishment that day. Yeah. So we were in, or I should say I was in uh, Ohio for our ride day at Briarcliff that same weekend. It just so happened to be the same weekend. So I'm like up at three o'clock in the morning in my hotel room, keeping tabs on this racing. And, and I think that was the second moto at that point. So, you know, it's six or seven o'clock in the morning at this point, I'm getting ready to go to the racetrack and I'm watching all this play out. And I'm like, man, like how's like Bryce. Okay. You're in second, you know, second row start, like you said. So, you know, you figure you're not going to get a good start yeah. and, and he gets up there and I'm like, okay, Bryce, just, you know, ride smart, do your thing. And he did that but he had a, another gear on that day. And just like you said, he, it never even was sketchy. Like I, like he got a wheel on Chad and took the spot. And then I think Chad probably even said as much that his thinking was, okay, well, I'm going to see what Bryce is doing to be faster than me and see what happens later in the race and credit to Bryce. And I thought to myself, I'm like, Chad's going to make a run late. And, mm -hmm. and Bryce didn't let him make, uh, make up enough time or make him en enough ground to make a move on him. And man, think about like the, the knowledge, the race craft, like all the craftiness that nearly 40 year old Chad Weenan yeah. has at this point. And on that day, Bryce was able to match it. And I just think like every one of those race experiences unfolding and going through it, experiencing it, man, putting that in Bryce's bag of tricks going forward for however long he's going to do this it's absolutely invaluable. That's how I see that. Yeah. And, and, and one of the amazing things too, is Bryce had already ridden, you know, he did a moto against with Joel and yeah. um, he, he was only off the bike for probably 30, 40 minutes and had to go against a fresh Chad Weenan. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing to it, think it about was. it like that. But no, one thing I was going to bring up earlier is I think, you know, we're talking a lot about Bryce, but going back to his 250 days when he got injured and he, and he broke his pelvis sockets, both of them, it was almost like we went to the races because Cody was still racing and it re Bryce got reset kind of like the year when he decided he was going to retire from pro racing. And when he wasn't going to do it, we were actually, he was working with me in Salt Lake city and um, we were listening to an interview of Jet Lawrence and Bryce all of a sudden pops up at dinner. I'm going to race. And I'm like, okay, we only have two months. 
for you to get ready. Yeah. And that night he ran home from the, to the hotel jogged. And, um, all of a sudden immediately I saw a light go off on him and he totally changed everything. Like eating, everything changed. He went to the gym at the hotel, started working out and just really focused on what he wanted to do. And I think that time of him thinking kind of like back when he was injured, he wasn't going to do it anymore. And he realized how much he loved the sport. Mm -hmm. I think that that's one of those things. There's no substitute for this, right? Like that, no. that natural high, that natural adrenaline that a person gets in that, in that sphere, whether whatever sport it is or whatever sport a person chooses, we all have our, have our, whatever bug we're bit by, but for us, it's ATV racing. And I, I can't imagine what it feels like to be Bryce Ford at the ATV nationals. Every little kid wants to, you know, give you a slap on the hand and, and everybody looks at you like, Hey, that's Bryce Ford. Like, I, I can't imagine what that's like. And um, it's just been really cool to see him flourish in the way that he has. Like I've single-handedly sat here and watched him mature as a person and a rider and really become an ambassador for the sport. And I think that he's at a level right now that two years ago, like we knew how much talent he had. We knew he was capable of a lot of just about anything, but still, I think he's surpassed my expectations, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and I sometimes wonder and not to, you know, I, don't, I guess I don't know how to say this, but I've sometimes wondered, like, he's got Cody with him every day, too. Like, he's got a, not only does he have a training partner, he's got his older brother that I'm sure he looks up to in many ways. And I know Cody is a grinder. I know Cody works his ass off. I know Cody does so many things right mm -hmm. that I think that that's probably like a like an added advantage that Bryce has in his corner, too, because you know, Bryce has buku talent, right? Like I know he works his ass off, but he's got talent coming, coming out of all pores as well. And then in his mm -hmm. corner, he has a brother that works his ass off. And, you know, I'm sure if, if I got somebody working their tail off next to me, like that's going to make me want to go that much harder, work that much harder, stay in the shop that much longer, the gym that much longer, work on the track that much more, all those things. I just always thought that Cody being right there is probably advantage for Bryce as well. No, I, I agree with you 100%. And Cody is very, very um, competitive. It's just the hardest thing for Robin and I is it doesn't really translate at the track because Cody is very smart. He really overthinks a lot of things instead of just lets it out. Mm -hmm. But every now and then, Cody will pop out a performance that's like incredible. And, and I go back to we were at um, Ironman and Cody was racing Pro-Am. And I don't know why we got in a discussion about this, but Cody had not, this was the old Ironman where it had that uphill big jump. Cody hadn't jumped it. Yep. And I'm like, Cody, you're going to get the whole shot. You're going to have to jump that. And next thing I know, Cody ripped the whole shot and he jumped it. And, <laughs> uh, and the one that was all over Cody in that race was a uh, real tall guy that raced for uh, Walsh. Walsh. Um, Parker will work. Huh? Parker will work. He, he would jump it sometimes, but Cody would jump it every lap and Cody would gap him. And Cody ended up beating, winning the race. And I'm like, great job, Cody. You know, I'm, I'm like, I never thought that Cody wouldn't get the whole shot, but I'm like, he could have played it safe and not gotten the whole shot. So he didn't yeah. have to jump it. Yeah. But he did what he had to do and he won the race. And I was like, I couldn't be happier because Cody's always been a little timid on big jumps. Well, he's a, he's a gamer, man. And, yeah, he was. and that doesn't surprise me. You know, we know he gets good starts and he, like, I just think about him as a dude that's going to step up to the plate when it's needed, you know, and he's become, yeah. he's become such a pros pro to me. He does everything the right way. And I just got off another interview that listeners will have heard earlier on this episode saying that, you know, what you're going to get from Cody each and every weekend. Like sometimes, like you said, he'll have a flash in the pan where he finishes sixth on a dry day and a, on a fast racetrack. Like we've seen it at Briarcliff over the years. We've seen it at a couple of these races where he just shows up and it's like, holy shit, where's this Cody been? You know, but at the same time, you know, he's going to do every lap. You know, he's going to put his best effort forward, his best foot forward. And you know, the dude's never going to quit and see, seeing him bloom and blossom into a full fledged pros pro man has been, has been really cool to see. Cause I enjoy Cody so much. Like I could talk to him all day long. I love like, love the the passion that he brings to so many different topics and everything else, man. Like I, I just love it. And I think he's a great addition to our, to our pro class. But like I said, I think that he's, he's always been, you would know better than I, but I've always looked at him as a nice tool for Bryce to have in his corner is, is big brother Cody. Oh, absolutely. No, those two. And people ask me this ever since they were little, do they fight? 
and they don't fight. And it's funny, like Cody's more like his mom. Bryce is more like my personality. And they know when one's mad at the other or whatever, and they just kind of give each other room. They don't fight. They get along great, and they actually help each other, you know, where their weakness, they help, you know, each other, and um, they do a great job. We interrupt this program for a special news bullet. The following message is brought to you by Manscaped.com. The Manscaped engineering team has outdone themselves this time, creating the Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer, now available for purchase in the U.S. and Canada. Join over 2 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped, an official sponsor of the Digging Deep ATVMX podcast, with this exclusive offer of 20% off and free worldwide shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. I'm one of the first people to try the new 4.0, and I am blown away. This thing is next level. What sets this trimmer apart from all the rest? The Lawnmower 4.0 gives you the ability to turn the LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave. It features a new multi-functioning on-off switch with travel lock for those of us who like to travel. And my favorite, the new trimmer allows you to customize your trim with four different guard lengths and upgrade from its predecessor that only featured two. If you're listening, you know that good tools are a must, so wait no more to get the best tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with code DIGGINGDEEP20 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com by using code DIGGINGDEEP20. Hey everyone, this is Larry Mills, president of DP Breaks North America and proud partner of the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast. We at DP Brakes are a longtime supporter of ATV racing and the world leader in centered brake technology, dominating the ATV world for decades by supporting the best four-wheeled racers on the planet. This year's lineup includes Jeff Restrelli, Mark Baldwin of Baldwin Motorsports, Ford Brothers Racing, Nick Janusa, and many more, including Mr. Digging Deep himself, Cody Jansen, plus all the top 17 GNCC pros such as seven-time champion Walker Fowler, Bryce O'Neill, Hunter Hart, Cole Richards, and Jared McClure, Adam McGill, and previous champion Chris Borch. These top riders continue to appreciate the high performance and impressive durability that their DP brakes have to offer, products that ultimately help place them on top of the podium week after week. DP brakes are available through www.dp-brakes.com or you can purchase them through your local parts and limited stocking dealer, or you can even message us, myself, Larry Mills, or DP Brakes on Instagram or Facebook. And if you have any questions about product or sponsorship support, please ask us. We are waiting for you. Join the best ATV riders in the world equipped with DP Brakes, and have a great year, everyone. Nearing two decades into the brand's existence, Factory 43 is back and better than ever, continuing to make major waves in the ATV world. For the third consecutive season, Factory 43 is the official aluminum parts choice of the Phoenix Racing ATV team, providing their state-of-the-art Evo Nerf bars, MX-style front bumpers, and grab bars for two-time champ Joel Hetrick. If you're in the market to upgrade your Nerf bars, bumpers, or grab bars, head over to Factory43ATV.com to see their full line of industry-leading products available for all makes and models. Head over to Factory43ATV.com today. I love that. I loved uh, I loved hearing the story about that first moto at Pleasure Valley where yeah. where they're checking on each other on the side yeah. of the racetrack. I mean, uh, it just doesn't get much better than that. And in that moment, you know, like, obviously we've seen these guys on the racetrack together for a number of years at this point. But in that moment, I'm like, that's like brotherly love in the middle yes. of a pro class race. That's brotherly love. And it was just, uh, it was amazing to think about. I'm like, man, what would it be like to have my brother in, in a pro class race with me? Like how weird would that be? But man, I, I just thought that that was so special. So, uh, so John, you have a racing background yourself, right? Not, not in an ATV racing, but you have a racing background. So how did the family find their way into eat, sleep and breathing ATV motocross like you guys do at this point? So when Cody was little, Robin's dad had some property. And so instead of having a battery powered little quad that always got stuck, we went out and bought them for Christmas one year, a little Players 50. And Cody had it for years. And as years went by, Cody asked for a Players 90 with reverse. And so we bought both of them, Players 90s. And Bryce was, uh, God, what was he like? Four, he was four years old. And he's riding this 90. And um, so I took him to a local track, which was Three Palms. And they started riding at Three Palms. And then we went up to Dallas and rode in a not far from our house now where we live is another track called uh, Whole Shot Valley, 15 minutes from here. 
and they were out there riding and uh, some people came up on quads and said, Hey, they ought to race. And I'm like, they should race at four and six. They can really race. And they're like, yeah. So ended up checking into racing and found out that I had the wrong bikes. So we had to buy DRR fifties and nineties. And that's how it started in um, 2007. Bryce was four and Cody was six. And you guys had a ATV local scene in Texas was pretty decent, right? So that would have helped. Yes, we had a really strong local series um, in the 50 class and the 90 class. We were running like 18, right under 20 entries. Yeah. And Amazing. Cody was at the age where he could ride 50 and 90. And Bryce could only race 50. So Cody was getting lots of track time. And it was pretty neat because Cody was moving up because he was also racing 50. And he, and he ended up winning 50 that first year. And he was third in 90. And I'd go up to the results. People didn't know who I was. And people right. were like, there's no way that this kid was 18th on that race. And now he's third. He, they're cheating. And it's like, no, it's the kids getting comfortable. And what we were doing was the perfect thing for him is let him race uh, two motos a day. Mm -hmm. and then the following year they added a 70 class and so they were able to to do bryce was able to do two and cody was doing two the next year that's awesome so that's how it started and then yeah at what point would you guys have went like national racing we went nationals in 2011 and it really took a while because um we we were ready to go sooner the problem is i was so intimidated to do it you know, to go somewhere out of the state, not knowing anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we had some friends, the Gonzaleses, their son raced uh, 90 mod. And so we went to Minnesota and they stayed with us. And, you know, when you have somebody with you, you kind of feel a little more confident. For sure. And that was the hardest thing for me was we went to, to Minnesota, signed Bryce up to some 50 class and it ended up being all Cobras. And so we're out there with the DRR and you would have thought, we were going to get stabbed, you know, like we're at a, a knife fight. You know, they're all looking at us. And then the second class, we we signed up Bryce in a 90 class. And Cody was in 90s himself. I mean, 70s. And Bryce went out there and got second uh, for the day, uh, racing the 50. And then the 90, he jumped out and, like, was was uh, second. And Cody was doing the same stuff. Like, we, they were very competitive and did really well. And, um, and then the next year, that's when we really um, started part in the nationals so so dad was intimidated by the atv nationals but the boys weren't no the boys weren't and, and it's hard because when you go to sign up and and i always felt that they should have had like somebody you could talk to that would kind of steer you in the mm -hmm. right direction yeah and and the people that sign up really don't know anything about the classes and they we were totally like wandering in the wrong classes and it took us a while to get it all figured out where yeah. the boys should be you know, I've often thought about that and I probably said it on the show before, but I've often thought about like how intimidating it must be if, cause I've, I've known no other way, right. Than being like totally in this thing since is like as long as I can remember, but what it must be like for somebody who doesn't know, or mom and dad don't know, and you're just going to go to an ATV national and give it a try. And like, where you start, how do you know what you race, what your quad needs? Like you definitely need to rely on, you know, friends that are maybe ahead of the curve, like you said. And, and I don't know, there's been a time or two that have been at an ATV national, right. And you're at a race and you see somebody that's in the wrong class with the wrong machine or whatever. And everybody mm -hmm. looks at them like the bad guy. And they just, mm -hmm. they, they just don't know any better. You know, they're not trying to yeah. do anything. They're probably there with a single axle trailer, just trying to spin laps at something they've always dreamed of being at. Right. So um, it's funny. Like it's those those, I don't know, you call them humble beginnings, but those beginnings that it's funny to think back on that when now you're like, you know, you're one of the guys that everybody wants to go to the races to see yet Bryce Ford, Cody Ford, everybody, Chad Weenan, Joel Hattrick, everybody at one time was just a guy, uh, you know, going to a national race, nervous about what it was going to be like. And it's just yeah. funny to, well, funny to think about how that all starts. I was just going to say, and that's why I really try to get involved in the rules and stuff, even though I, we're out of those classes. Like I really pushed hard to get um, 250 to be a production class, you know, like not the 300 big boards, because when I own those big boards, I realized how expensive they were. I'd rather race against more people. And I've always looked at the development of a 250. They spend all this money at, 
at Honda and KTM developing a 250. And then the first thing we would do is throw in some aftermarket cylinder. And so I really pushed for a long time, even though we were, we, we got out of the class to still try to get it to production where it was 250 and they did it. Mm -hmm. And once they gave us that 250 mod class and you saw how big that class was, it was a no brainer for them to do the rest. Mm -hmm. Well, and I don't know, not, not to go down that rabbit hole of the hybrid thing and you know, whatever, but that, that is kind of like why I've always believed in the production quads in general, because not only do I want to see more Yamahas out there because they continue to pump money and resources and support into our sport, which I love so much, but also like, I don't want people to say, you know what? I'm just not going to race anymore because I, and things are changing somewhat now, but I never wanted it to get to a point where somebody decided that they priced themselves out because they needed to buy a dirt bike and they needed to buy a hybrid, you know, conversion kit. And they needed to have this and they needed to have that. I know for, and, and you guys know too, cause I'm sure the boys have done laps on stock Yamahas that, that stock Yamaha platform is pretty darn good. Like a good rider can go be, pretty darn competitive without spending too, too much money. And I'm glad that we're at a point still. And now we're seeing things almost come full circle where the pro-am rules getting changed to production in the future here, you're seeing riders that it's not going to make sense to be on a hybrid right off a of 250 anymore. And I think that, I think that that's a, that's a good change for us. I know that there's people out there that will never agree with me, but like, I, I do think, especially as long as Yamaha's around, but I, I just think that that's such a good thing for us to not have people think that they need to have a hybrid because I'm telling you, people can, people can say, if you build a YFZ to the moon and you have a hybrid and you know, maybe those builds are competitive numbers, but right now you don't have to spend that money for sure like a good rider in a class that isn't pro or pro-am can go be competitive on a relatively mild yfz and there's people that would price themselves out with hybrids i know i'm getting long-winded here but like no no i've i've always been of the of the thinking if you have to have a hybrid you're going to price people out plain and simple well i think there's multiple things there i i think you're I think there's people that try to argue that hybrids are cheaper and I disagree because now, you know, as well as I do, you can buy a motor from the factory Yamaha to replace your production bike. Yep. You don't have to buy a dirt bike to get the second motor. Right. And the other problem I, I feel with it is these guys in pro class are getting very little pay. How fast do we want these guys to go? You know, as well as I do, you get somebody out there, on any class on a hybrid that they can't handle and they end up wiping out 10 people are, are how, how bad are the, the injuries going to get by going faster. And then, you know, I do a lot of jet ski riding and we can make these boats really fast. And the question is, I always look at this on a, on a quad too. There's a point where the, the whole of a boat gets dangerous going too fast on it. Okay. Well, where's that point on a quad? You know, you're putting all this extra power that really wasn't designed for a four-wheeler. It was designed for a two-wheeler. And it's just, to me, a very dangerous thing we're doing. Yeah. And sometimes, and I've always said this, and I think, you know, back in your day, you saw this a lot. We had 14-year-olds on, on 450s. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the rules have got to protect the kids from the parents. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a great rule that you got to be 16 to be on a 450. And when you get on that bike, I don't think you need to go to the max. I mean, you know, as well as I do, if we put a dirt bike Yamaha motor on these quads today. These things, there's no telling how fast we can make them go. Right. Yep. No, but somebody's going right. to get really, really hurt on them. And I think where we are today, we're already going fast. I mean, you know, that class is faster than it's ever been. Yeah, I agree. I mean, and, and we have great competitive racing. So why do we want to throw something in there that's going to jeopardize that whole thing, what we have? Yeah, no, I, I could not agree more, John. I, again, like I, I know that there's people, like you said, that argue the hybrids are cheaper. And I, that, that line of that train of thought is coming from the fact that you don't have to build the motor up a ton. Like the platform starts really, really, really good. Mm -hmm. But the fact of the matter is that people aren't going to leave them stock. Like you can tell me that you're leaving your no. practice motor stock and you're just spinning laps on it, but that's not what you're going to do with your, with your race quad. Like that's just not it, what anybody is going to do. And I, and I, and, and I don't want to 
rag on anybody, but a perfect example was the pro stock class. Anytime you have a stock class, people are going to find a way to kind of bend the rules, get in the gray area. Mm -hmm. And and that's not what it is meant to do. And it's like, you know, we need to have rules that make sense and classes that make sense. Mm -hmm. And I told people all the time, like, I get ragged on a lot, but I'm like, I will never make a rule to benefit myself. And they'll start talking to me about rules. And I'm like, well, you're going off into what's going to help you. What's going to help the sport? And that's what I believe. I mean, I I, I push for like super mini to be the, the same, the two stroke, whatever the dirt bike is. Mm -hmm. Because I look at when we get into four strokes, that's where the expense comes. So if we can keep our those kids on a two stroke, as long as we can, it keeps everyone's cost down. Yeah. You should never race a four stroke in 150 class. That class should be dominated by two strokes and, and they're cheaper to fix and repair. Mm -hmm. When you get to the 250s, that's where it starts. That's where the, the four stroke should start. And I've always tried to keep it cheap and, and, and affordable because I think it's much better for all of us to race with full gates. For sure. And you is. always run into problems. Like you see it on social media. I see it on social media. I really pushed for the, the rule to be pro-am, to be production because it's a stepping stone. Mm -hmm. And I think we're getting these kids prepared. And I think there's a, we've seen in the past, we got kids that jump from a hybrid and go production and pro. It doesn't work. No. So, so what, so you are touching on something that I've been thinking about a ton and I know I've mentioned it before, but before you would take your 250 and your kid could ride the same 250 and put a 450 motor in it and then come out guns blazing in you know, the B class or the A class, or we saw it with a, in, with a rider or two in, in pro sport or pro-amp. But now being that pro-am is going to be a production, I think that that is going to bode well because we've seen a couple of those riders when they try to go pro then and they got to hop on a production quad and they've literally never rode a production quad in their entire life in mm -hmm. the rail and the wheels fall off. Now mm -hmm. that's not going to happen because they're going to find their footing on that production said production quad in pro-am and pro sport. And then they're going to go to the pro class already knowing that quad and they're going to be able to pick up right where they left off. And I think that, so I think that that bodes so well for riders as they look to the pro class. Yes. Like before you could ride that same 250 chassis like deal mm -hmm. that you were used to and be so good right when you came out of the gate as an amateur and then flame out as a pro. I think that this rule is so good for people because just like you said, they're going to get that, that production rule is going to have people really finding their footing in pro am and pro sport. And then, it's not going to be such a jump, such a change for the yeah. pro class. I think that that is such a, such a big thing. And I was just going to say, and that was one thing that was different between my two. Cody got to experience the hybrids uh, on the 450s. And when Bryce came in, he's like, I don't want a hybrid. I want to ride a production bike, whatever's in pro class. When we got into pro sport and pro am, he rode a production bike mm -hmm. and Cody dabbled um for a year on a hybrid in the pro-am class in pro sport and the other thing that i really drove that we had no clue going into pro how to time qualify and that's one thing i i pushed the series to go back to pro-am have time qualifiers and basically mimic what they're doing in pro class mm -hmm. because the sad thing is these kids and even today you you see it today in pro-am they don't know that you can only, you only need to do one or two fast laps. They're doing the whole practice wide open. Uh -huh. And it's like, you guys need to save your energy because you're going to be back out here two more motos in a pro class. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're going to learn, but they just need to learn. But how are you going to learn if you don't do it? Yeah, that, that came out of nowhere um, last year when, to me anyway, when all of a sudden there was time qualifying again for Pro-Am. And I thought that, that was such a big thing because I remember back when I was in Pro-Am, back in the day, pro-am production had time qualifying. And I remember being out there for my first time qualifying session, like, like, what are we even doing? Like it, you can yeah. dumb it down to be, you know, you got to just turn one hard lap. But like, if you've never done that before, you've raced for 20 years or whatever the number is 15 years, and you've never done this before. Like, yes, it is a good thing to have done that in pro-am before you go pro. I think that that's 
such a smart thing too, that it doesn't, yeah. it's not such an adjustment to go pro. These yeah. guys have gotten a little bit of it, but, but in my day, they took it away because they said, well, these riders are getting treated too much like pros and then people don't want to go pro. So that's why they started stripping the sight yeah. lap and all that stuff away from us, you know, but I th- I'm glad to see that, that kind of momentum going back the other way. Cause we want to prepare our riders to be pros. And, and what's really hard too about pro am and pro I tell everybody before they got the pro am and pro they were sprint racing. Now they're endurance racing. Mm-hmm. And so everything that these kids have been doing their whole career, they have to tr- change their riding to be able to be there at the end. And that's a hard thing to do. It is. And, and, and I, you know, and I don't think people ever realize, you know, that there's a, there's a change at pro am that you're now endurance racing instead of sprint racing. Because anybody, you know, is like is a, they can ride wide open for five laps. Of course. But to do it for 12, it's a whole new game. It's a totally and, and that's different, hard. It's like a totally different sport, John. It is. It is. It's totally different, totally different racing now that they have to condition themselves for. Yeah. And that's the thing that's hard. You know, I mean, you, you see great things out of great riders, but it's only for a short period of time because they're sprint racers. racers. They haven't transferred yet to endurance racing. Success in the ATV MX world is similar to what creates financial success as well. The right people, the right advice, and more importantly, hard work and the benefit of an ongoing relationship as situations change and adversity is experienced. Do you have the right financial advisor to help you reach your goals? Haymower Financial Group can create a personalized, goal-based plan to help your family prepare for whatever life brings. Call me, Scott Haymower, at Haymower Financial Group, a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services at 920-338-8150. That's 920-338-8150. Offices located in beautiful De Pere, Wisconsin, with registrations and clients nationwide. Headlined by the 4130 Chromali, Launderville Steel and Concrete Supply is a full-service steel supplier of new and surplus steel, aluminum, and stainless steel products. This racing family-owned full metal service center and concrete product supplier comes with over 30 years of experience serving the entire United States from their central Midwest location. As the number one choice for nationwide shipments and with available next-day delivery in select areas, LSE has you covered near or far. 4130 is not just the chromoly tubing and plate used in the building of chassis for an array of motorsports applications, but it is also the name of the newest addition to the Pro Paddock with riders Jaden J.J. Launderville and Max Linquist, introducing the new 4130 Motorsports team. Launderville Steel offers a large selection of material for any project, including their concrete division that can supply everything you need to complete your next business or personal project. For a quote or more info, visit LaundervilleSteel.com today or give them a call at 715-675-6193. That's 715-675-6193. Here at Digging Deep, we have an obvious passion for ATVs and pridefully enjoy sharing the sport's history. Since 2019, when the podcast was born, we've been working to partner with individuals who share our passion, but one man and his vision had been missing from our partnership group until now. When it comes to the sports history, the hallowed grounds of Binky's Forever ATC Museum has it all. Binky Tapscott's mind-blowing collection of three- and four-wheelers has preserved history by spanning all makes and models from Honda three-wheelers in chronological order to unique builds that shaped ATV racing as we know it, like Doug Gust's iconic DRZ-powered hybrid thumper and everything in between. There's no denying Binky's passion, a passion that we certainly relate to here at Digging Deep. Binky's goal is to share his amazing collection with fellow enthusiasts by making his prized possessions accessible to the public via scheduled visits. Follow Forever ATC Museum on Facebook and watch ForeverATC.com for further updates on possibly getting a chance to see Binky's Forever ATC Museum for yourself. We are proud to welcome Binky's Forever ATC Museum to the Digging Deep family. As the number one podcast in ATV racing, it's only right that we partner with the industry leaders in suspension tuning. Insert Impact Solutions. Impact Solutions is a full-service ATV and side-by-side suspension center specializing in the revalving and service of your motocross and off-road suspension. With over 25 years of elite level knowledge, experience, and testing with riders of all ages and ability levels, Jay Goble and the Impact crew strive to exceed clients' expectations for service and setup. Impact Solutions is the official Elka Suspension Service Center of the United States, offering unmatched product knowledge and experience. Whether you're in need of service, parts, warranty, sales, or technical support, Impact Solutions has you covered. Head over to ImpactSolutionsATV.com or give them a call today. 
With the desire to keep you in the race, Ultimate Poly Products offers the ultimate protection collection of case savers, chain sliders, intake manifolds, and more. Founded on quality in 1998, this family-owned and operated business produces products created by racers for racers. These industry-leading products are proudly made and manufactured in the USA, with their case savers being made of the highest quality American-made polyurethane on the market and designed to completely conform to your engine case to help prevent case damage from a thrown chain because no one wants to be a spectator on race day. Join top pro riders like Bryson Neal, Walker Fowler, John Glotta Jr., Adam McGill, Cole Richardson, and more by using UPP Racing products. Use discount code DIGGINGDEEP15 at upprac.com to save on your next order. Ultimate Poly Products, made to last longer so you can ride more. Thanks for listening, and remember to support our partners. Now back to the show. And that's one thing Robin and I, with our experience in racing, that we've done other things not motorsports we were doing water skiing and and jet ski racing yeah one thing we instilled in the boys is we keep the pressure off of them try to keep all the negativity away from them because you always if you're doing everything right you're going to have haters and if you're not winning everyone's your friend that's just the way it is you're hitting the nail on the head john um and i think that that's such a such a big thing right like you want to keep it fun. And I've always thought that from, from my dealings and conversations with you guys, like you're trying to keep it fun and the vibes high. Like we're all doing this at the end of the day for a hobby, whether you're a pro yeah. or you're a beginner, like we're still doing this for a hobby and we're trying to do it to have fun. If you're not having fun doing this, then there's absolutely no purpose behind and no reasoning behind going to the racetrack. So, yes. um, I've always thought that from you guys, that, 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 uh, the vibes are good. And, and I love the way that you guys do it. It's all about having fun and it's about doing it together as a family. I, I, I absolutely love that. So, um, you've touched on the fact that you know, you guys have been racers, you've been a racer, uh, you've essentially been a, a team manager, you've been a truck driver, a mechanic at times, et cetera, et cetera. The, the list goes on. You've done it all, John. So um, do you have a, do you have a favorite part? Like, is there a, is there a favorite part about this whole thing? Cause for me, like I come, I came to really love like the preparation for it and getting machines ready and the traveling even at times, all that stuff. Like I, I loved all of it. Do you mm-hmm. have a do you have a favorite part of of this whole song and dance? I love being around at the track and and getting to the track, setting everything up. But I think one of the most fun things about the whole thing is when the boys have done really well. You can be exhausted on your way home, but you're just got so much adrenaline going, and you're on the phone talking to people, and yeah, just can't believe you know they did this or did that. That is probably the biggest high of the whole thing for me that's what we do it for right like yeah. trying to like i said earlier you get a taste of that feeling and then yep. all you want is to feel that feeling again and it's just it's such a it's such a like i said it's such an like an addictive thing it's so funny yeah. so so that's going to be the hope right is to do that more and more here in 2024 we touched on it briefly but um less than a month away from daytona so what are your expectations for ford brothers racing in 2024 i think the competition's only getting harder Mm-hmm. I mean, I look at all these guys kind of like what Jeffrey and Brandon are doing, kind of like what you pointed on earlier. We've had that forever. And I, and I told this people locally, like they would have to wait for some friend to show up to ride against. Bryce and Cody live in the same house. They would go out and ride together. And we had an advantage. And I knew that. And I told them that. And now I see a lot of these people um, today are doing the exact same thing that we do a lot of. And that's right again, you know, right. You know, you have Joel and Decker training, you have Jeffrey and, and Brandon, Max and um, Salinas. There's just a lot of pros that are riding together, kind of like what Chad and, and Thomas were doing, you know, a long time. Yeah. You know, like I was around the tally lot. John really never really trained with other pros until we got him down here and we brought Nick in Mm -hmm. and um, they rode together. But um I think that's key to it all is, is them riding together and feeding off of each other. The days they don't want to ride, they get up and ride. They don't want to work out. They work out. Mm -hmm. It's great motivation. It's like nothing else. It's like, it's, I should say it's like anything else, John, where you have somebody to keep you accountable. Like Mm -hmm. it, it, it changes the game. And I think that we, I think it started in the dirt bike world. You know, it, it, they, they say that, uh, two wheeled guys in the Ricky Chad and James era, nobody rode with anybody or not at least at their caliber. And then 
that changed and then Alden came along and then, you know, they started riding with each other. And now you've seen that in our sport as well. More and more people have rode with each other. And I've said probably 20 times on my show here that that was my biggest downfall is that I didn't have riders that I was riding with like the other dudes from Wisconsin, Sammy Rowe and Nick DeNoble, the dudes that came before me. Um, they had guys that, that they got, they went places and rode with people, trained with people. And I just, mm -hmm. I didn't do enough of that. So then when I went to the racetrack, so there was times where I was like shocked by the pace, you know, I was like, yeah. man, how are these dudes going so fast? And your boys and so many other riders out there now, but your boys have always had that advantage of riding together. It didn't matter what class they were in or whatever, mm -hmm. um, whether pros or not that, you know, they were already seeing national pace with each other at the practice track. And, yeah. and, uh, I think that that's uh, such an advantage for sure. No, it is absolutely. And, and, you know, now you have everybody doing it, which is really good for the sport and the conditioning that all these riders are in is amazing. Hey, you touched on it earlier that the class is better than it's ever been. And I yeah, think it's it just going to keep getting better. I think we got, we got some good talent coming in here in 2024 and it's just going to keep, just going to keep wicking up the pace. So like I said, Daytona is less than a month away. I can't wait for it. I wish it was tomorrow. Uh, Brooke and Brooke and I are going to make our way down there for Daytona and then spend a couple of days at Yamaha for the 20th anniversary of the YFZ and that whole celebration there. I'm pretty stoked about that trip. Stoked to, to get down there and get this season kicked off. John, one last thing though, that I want to touch on and you just brought the guy up. There's a, a lot of buzz right now around this legends race coming up at Briarcliff in July. And, uh, I, I had to ask you if you were going to get your buddy, John Natalia out here to commit to this thing, the, the Iron Man has to be there in my mind. I know that there's been some talks already and stuff like that, but I think that we got to get this guy to commit to this. Like that race ain't going to be the same unless John Natalia's right. there, John. No, I agree. I, I haven't really talked to John about it. Okay. But, um, I can't imagine him not being there especially if there's a legends race. That's a lot. And, and honestly, I know you weren't there, but watching that wave of race. Yeah. I was honestly, I thought John was going to win it when I first saw him riding. And um, I was blown away that he didn't make it to the final, but he still has it. That's for sure. That, and that's it, what God, that, that, I'm telling you. Like I said earlier about some of these guys, like those legends, those all time yeah. greats, they don't lose it. I swear. Like no. they, they're not conditioned. Like they're riding every day. But, yeah. but they don't lose it. Like it's in them that they just have a different gear than everybody else that doesn't go away. I'm telling you. And, and, yeah. and, and maybe that's comical or obvious to say about a dude that's literally an all time great. He's probably on the Mount Rushmore. Right. But man, I, I can't imagine having a legends race without him. I know that we've been talking about Dustin Wimmer being confirmed to go to this thing. And Dana says he's going, and I know Corey Ellis wants to go. And, um, and there's a number of guys. I mean, I, I can't imagine Joe bird not being there. And, and from what I'm told, it's going to be basically a full gate. If it's not a full gate, it's going to be really, really close to it. Like upwards of 16, 17, 18 guys. And, uh, man, I can't imagine John Natale not being there and I can't freaking wait for that weekend. Talk about being excited for something. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, I'll get to announce that weekend again this year. And I can't, I cannot wait for, for that race. That's going to be the coolest thing to see dudes like Dustin Wimmer. I was just talking to yeah. a gentleman this afternoon that is in Dustin Wimmer's camp. And he's like, Dustin Wimmer hasn't been like on a quad in like 13 years. Like he hasn't probably had been at an ATV national. I don't think since way back when. So, um, to see him back at a, at a national and riding, like, mm -hmm. I mean, names like Dana Creech, like Dana Creech being there. Tell me like, that's why I want to hype up everybody that confirms that they're going to this thing, because I want all the other pros, like, you know, legends that are on the fence or have been asked, but didn't commit yet to be like, you know what? Like I'm in, like, I, I just, yeah. I, uh, like I said, I know you got a history with John Natale and stuff. Yeah. I needed to bring it up because I, I really hope that he gets in for this thing. Well, you know, it'd be really cool if we could get Yamaha to provide 20 stock bikes for him. <laughs> well, well the, it's their 20th anniversary. <laughs> well, there's been plenty of people that said to me, Hey, get Yamaha to, you know, to, to make this thing a spec race, but I don't know if they're, if, I mean, that, that'd be a pretty big expense that, on there. Yeah, it would be. That'd be cool though. They probably make their money back if they auction the bikes off after the end. Yeah, but the internet will burn down if Dustin Wimmer's riding a Yamaha. I've already been told that this afternoon. So. <laughs> well, you know, I was thinking about Natalie. What's he ride, a Yamaha or a Honda? 
Yeah. He looked really good at Wavos on a Yamaha. Well, that's what I figured. I mean, John, yeah. I, I know John, he's not going to build a bike for it. So he's going to have yeah. to get a yeah. bike from somebody. He's going to borrow somebody's <laughs> bike from somebody. Yeah. It might yeah. be a 90 mod, but he's going to try to race it for sure. Yeah. 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 Well, he, he'll be good for a block pass or two and, and high elbows, even if he's on a TRX 90. So yeah, there's no doubt sure. about that. Well, John, this is, uh, this has been so much fun. I, I can't thank you enough for giving me a little of your time. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't know exactly where we were going to go. I had a number of topics and um this has been this has been so much fun so i appreciate your time so much and uh man the, the season's right around the corner so we're going to be able to uh to spend you know friday saturday sundays at the racetrack here before we know it yeah and i was just going to let you know the boys are going to be racing a jet ski race on the 24th of february and have 300 miles did they do that last year me and bryce did okay but we didn't fare well so Bryce okay. and Cody are going to team up and I'm going to team up with another guy that I used to race with way back when. Okay. So now I remember seeing some of this last year. Cause I remember like, I remember learning or, or hearing, I don't know if you, somebody, one of you told me or reading some stuff about it, that there's, there's ins and outs of this race that like the stuff that you guys learned last year was going to pay dividends this year. Am I kind of in the right thinking there or no? My, my learning is I'm going to run pretty much almost a stock boat. Because it's 300 miles. It's yep. five and a half hours. Wow. And the boys are going to be, I believe, on a modified Yamaha with the turbo on it that will fly. Okay. But will it last? Okay. That's going to be the thing. Got it. And I think it's going to be, um, I think they're going to have it live. But it's going to happen in Havasu. You guys will have to make sure we have that link because we'd love to okay. love to post it and keep tabs on it for sure. That'd yeah. be uh, that'd be interesting. A little little sibling father rivalry race going yeah. on. It'll be fun to see who's going to come out on top. So it's going to be really hard on Robin Hood root for. <laughs> well, if it's anything, so 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 what I've been told, and I think that this is true, is that Robin doesn't watch the the, the races that the boys are in. Right? She's back in the no. in the in the camper outside the camper because there's been a time or two where I've been like running up to the up to the race, right? Where like the race hasn't started yet, I'm not missing anything yet, but the pits are dead, and Robin is still back at the at the truck. So does that does that work with the with the jet ski stuff too? Like, does she watch or does she sit back at the truck? I don't know the answer to that. I think she'll be able to watch this. Okay. But yeah, she doesn't watch the cod racing anymore. I don't I don't watch practice. Like at the track I will watch, but at home, I'll glance out there and when they're, you know, tapping their brakes and diving down, I'm like, they're wrecking. I'm like, no, they didn't. I can't watch this anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I'm no more glancing for me. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's yeah. funny. It, it it's amazing the um superstitions you do. Mm-hmm. Before races, you try to do the same stuff. Hey, they did well. Well, you keep doing the same stuff. (laughs) Oh, we we all got those things, John. Like whether it's spaghetti the night before, putting your left sock on before your right, or vice versa, your right knee brace on before your left knee brace. Like we all got those things. So the lucky shirt, like everybody's had a lucky shirt at some point. So yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, that's funny, but yeah, uh, yeah, John, again, I can't thank you enough for your time. You're welcome. And uh, I'll get you that link. Yes, please do. Please do. I'd love to keep tabs on that. And yeah, like I said, thanks for making some time for us. And we'll see you uh, a few short weeks from now. Thank you. See you then. You're the man, John. Wishing you and your family the best in these next couple weeks. That's Ford Brothers Racing's John Ford signing off on the Digging Deep ATV MX podcast brought to you by Binky's Forever ATC Museum. Have a good night, sir. Thanks so much. Thank you. Man, that was a really fun episode. I found myself grinning for most of this one. And if you haven't done so yet, let's get you signed up now for Digging Deep ATV Fantasy at ATVFantasy.com. Thanks to tonight's featured guests, John Ford and Adam Smith. Thanks to producer Dallas Jansen, my brother, for all his hard work. Thanks to Brooke and AMA official Harv Whipple. Thanks to all of our donors. You know who you are. We appreciate you so much. Thanks to all of our partners. CST Tires. Go to shop.csttires.com com today. Yamaha thanks to Blue Crew, thanks to SSI decals, Valvoline, DID Racing Chain, Namira Technologies, Bronco ATV and UTV components, Launderville Steel Enterprises and Concrete Supply, the financial advice of the Haymauer Financial Group, DP Brakes, Factory 43, Binkies Forever ATC Museum, Impact Solutions, Ultimate Poly Products, UPP Racing, use code DiggingDeep15 at UPPRacing.com, and Manscaped, get 20% off and free shipping 
shipping with code DIGGINGD20 at manscaped.com. Support all the brands that support our show, and don't forget to use those codes to save. Find it all on our website, and be sure to click that Rocky Mountain ATBMC banner for all your gear and parts needs and to help us out. And most of all, thanks to you guys for listening. Shop.diggingdeepatvmx.com is your go-to for all of our merchandise, including our brand new merchandise drop that we dropped last week. So that's at shop.diggingdeepatvmx.com. Check that out today. We're so stoked about that. If you're looking for another easy way to help support us, visit our website and click the Patreon or Buy Me Coffee buttons. This allows you to set up a one-time or monthly contribution to support our efforts. You can follow the show on social media, Digging Deep ATVMX Podcast, and myself, Cody Jansen, for additional content, coverage, and more fun stuff as kickoff to the 2024 season is just around the corner. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and more. Wherever you find podcasts, you'll find the Digging Deep ATVMX Podcast. All episodes, additional podcast providers, sponsor links, and discount codes, show merchandise, fantasy info, and more can all be found on our website diggingdeepatvmx.com so check that out today be a friend tell a friend please download subscribe rate review and share and with that for john ford adam smith brooke jansen dallas jansen and i'm your host cody jansen thanks for listening to and making us the most listened to podcast in atv racing with nearly 248,000 downloads last month in 107 total countries until next time thanks for joining us in digging deep with the stars of atv motocross atvfantasy.com do it Things are crashing and burning here at the Digging Deep Podcast, much like the Titanic. Those guys were hauling ass, for real. I remember watching Doug Gus, I don't know who it was, Steel City, running the same times Friday afternoon as James Stewart was on Sunday back then. It was mental. I've never seen quads go that fast. Quad leaders are freaking gnarly.